Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. So the uh, original title for the talk was uh, Protecting Yourself from the uh, Container Shakeout. I decided to uh, kind of tone it down a little bit because uh, I've been known to uh, say controversial things. And now that we've uh, grown to be a, um, a more mature organization, it seems like the uh, fallout of uh, my statements um, and the downside of that has increased, so I've become a little bit more mellow. So I apologize if my presentation is not going to be as exciting as it usually is. Um, but um, I'd like to also start by uh, apologizing for not having enough room. So you are all cramped in here. Um, you may be wondering why that is, and uh, the reason is uh, we did it on purpose, believe it or not. Um, the reason is because um, we actually have a certain sentimental value attached to this venue. Because when we started in OpenStack um, about four years ago, uh, the first thing that uh, uh, we did, our first foray into the OpenStack world, was uh, to host uh, an OpenStack meetup. And uh, the OpenStack meetup we hosted was here. And it looked like this. If uh, this room looks familiar, um, it's because you're in it. Um, and um, at that time, we saw OpenStack as this new cool thing and really wanted to get involved in some shape or form. So I called up Lauren, uh, who ran marketing for the OpenStack Foundation, and asked her, you know, Lauren, how can we get involved? What can we do? And she said, well, you know, uh, what you can do is you can do a meetup. Um, so I said, OK, we'll, we'll do a meetup. Uh, and we hosted this meetup there. It was the first meetup. It was in the Computer History Museum. Uh, we had 100 people there. Uh, the reason uh, why we got the opportunity to do the meetup is because uh, Alex Polvi, uh, who was the original organizer of the OpenStack meetup, um, I'm guessing at that point decided to uh, go ahead and start doing CoreOS and was no longer very interested in OpenStack. So incidentally, he will be talking right after me. and. Uh, probably will be able to add some more color uh, to the story. But at that time, um, OpenStack was just starting out. Um, and it was this new cool kid on the block. Um, there were other kids, like Eucalyptus and CloudStack, but when OpenStack appeared, everybody understood that this is the cool kid. And at that point, OpenStack was uh, all about VM orchestration. And uh, the vision that uh, OpenStack painted for itself at that time was way beyond that. It wasn't just an orchestrator for VMs. OpenStack wanted to become, aspired to become the uh, ubiquitous open source cloud computing platform for all. And in fact, that is the official mission um, of OpenStack um, and the OpenStack Foundation. But uh, recently, some new things started happening. Now, uh, first of all, OpenStack has become much bigger, and you know this meetup has now grown from 100 people in this room to whatever you see now. But um, all of a sudden, some new cool kids started appearing. Um, kids like Mesos and Kubernetes, which is the recent cool kid, and of course, Docker, that uh, um, nobody can stop talking about. And um, all of these cool kids are saying the same thing. So this is literally, if you go to a website for Mesos, um, this is what they say. They say, we are the new kind of operating system for the data center. This is just the statement on the website. And um, if you kind of try and go and browse via Kubernetes website and try to research what that is, they say, we're a platform for cloud-native apps. And in fact, now there's even a foundation for cloud-native apps that they started. And of course, if you go to Docker, Docker says, we are an open platform for distributed applications. So interesting. Um, it sounds like if you read all the statements, it sounds like all these things are directly competing. And then um, you start reading press announcements, um, and you get this. They all say, well, you know, we're all complementary, and we integrate with each other, and we work with each other. And uh, what happens is the <laughs> confusion sets on. So how can that be? They're all operating systems for the data center, but they all integrate and they work with each other. Um, 
I'm confused. So you're not the only ones if you're confused. And uh, this is what it looks like when uh, you read articles and uh, talk to press. And in fact, you know, all of these guys, they would tell press that uh, you know, we work together and stuff like that. But uh, in reality, if uh, <laughs> you uh, actually look at the behind the scenes conversations and the things that these people are telling customers, um, they look like these kind of guys, not like the guys in the previous slide. Because uh, ultimately, everybody wants to rule the world, right? Um, nobody wants to be just something that integrates with something else. It's not interesting. Um, there is kind of a, the flip side to this is that naturally, you know, it's, it's normal to assume that everybody cannot rule the world. Uh, there's going to be a winner or there's going to be maybe a couple of things or a couple of operating systems that you classify as winners. And uh, as you know, Mirantis, we're all behind OpenStack, so OpenStack is our thing. And uh, we, I'm honest, we, we want to be the winners uh, and we want OpenStack to win. And um, to be able to win in uh, the world, um, first you have to define what, what, what is this world that, that you want to win in. What does the world look like? And uh, at Mirantis, we have a very, uh, um, I guess, one-sided skewed perception of the world that uh, we see through just the OpenStack prism. Um, so we did some research uh, to figure out how to win in the world. Um, we uh, you know, read some analyst articles, um, hired some analysts, to try and figure out what is, what is the future world that, that we ultimately want to win at uh, looks like. And uh, we got a couple of interesting kind of nuggets. So this is one thing that uh, is somewhat depictive of what the future world is going to look like. Um, what are the interesting kind of takeaways here? So this right here um, is uh, the uh, VMware world, so to speak. Um, naturally, if VMware is extending themselves to encompass other buckets of this world, but uh, uh, this is kind of the world where they play in. And this right here, realistically, is uh, the OpenStack world. So what we see is that you know, the OpenStack world that is today is definitely growing, but still today and looking into the future, um, it's still kind of a small sliver of the world. And the, the most uh, kind of disturbing uh, trend is probably right here, because this right here is uh, the uh, public cloud, or to be really specific, uh, Amazon Web Services um, slice of the world. So what is it that all of us, when we say that we want to uh, rule the world, uh, be it Mesos or Kubernetes or Docker or OpenStack, what do we mean by that? What do we want the world to look like? Well, ideally, we want the world to look like this. As opposed to this, which is kind of the trend today. And uh, despite all of us um, proclaiming our ambitions to own the world to the customers and stating it as fact, uh, the one thing that all of us, I think, have in common is that none of us want the world to look like this. <laughs> so what does it take? What does it take for, uh, for us to actually get to this, to this point where uh, the world actually looks like this as opposed to a sliver of the world? Well, the reality of it is that uh, to build a, a data center operating system, you need to solve a lot of hard problems. There's a lot of hard problems. There's hard problems at the top of the stack, and some examples of those problems can be things like workload portability um, or um, application monitoring and not of scaling or application policy management, and there's a whole bunch of guys that are trying to solve those problems. And then there's a whole bunch of uh, problems at the bottom of the stack that are also super hard problems. So, for instance, an SDN that works at scale, right? Uh, many would make a claim that this problem is solved, but uh, from personal experience, we know that uh, it is far from that. Uh, problem of uh, resource scheduling when it comes to uh, 
really highly distributed systems. Very hard problem to solve. Uh, there's been forays into solving that, but uh, again, there's much room to improvement. Um, controlling heterogeneous infrastructure pools. So OpenStack has made some credible efforts to uh, solve that problem, but again, um, it's just kind of a first step. So the interesting thing is that if you kind of return to this uh, um, paradigm of uh, you know, this my platform and the many problems, um, pretty much all of the uh, fabrics or whatever you call them that proclaim themselves to be the data center operating system, what they say is that you know, we are that. We've solved all of these problems already. They are done, use us. But in reality, um, if you kind of double click on that, it looks more like this. Typically, um, all of these guys have solved one very acute problem, um, and um, the statements about the uh, data center operating system are more kind of directional statements. And um, you can't blame anybody for that because um, naturally, you know, everybody is ambitious and everybody has aspirations. Uh, but more importantly, also, I think that uh, we all, um, including ourselves, the OpenStack community and Marantis, we believe that the problem that we have solved is the most important problem. And um, now that we've solved this one, we're going to leverage the fact that we've solved it and all of these other things that all these other people have been solving for, in some instances, decades. These are all just easy things. We'll just build them and it's, it's all going to be dandy from there. So, let me kind of you know, give you some, some examples um, of, of what I mean by that. So let's look at Docker, for instance. Docker solved a very important problem, brought containers to the mainstream. Um, and uh, I look at Docker kind of like this. So Docker right now um, has become a container standard. And uh, what Docker has done is they've solved the very acute problem of workload portability. And um, you know, they've built a container that uh, covers probably 90% of the use cases of next-gen applications. So unless you need uh, building an application that, that needs some sort of super privileges, um, Docker is a great solution, great standard. And um, now that they've solved this problem, they want to own the world, right? So um, what's happening is they're building um, around that solution a whole bunch of their own stuff. So, you know, recently they've announced something, Docker Swarm, right? So what is Docker Swarm? Well, it's, a, it's basically a Docker cluster manager, kind of like Kubernetes. Um, so they're basically solving the same problem that Kubernetes is solving. They would argue that it's different and it's better and it's worse, whatever, but I mean, there's, the intersect is very dramatic. Let's look at another example. Uh, Docker is simple, right? Most of you know Docker and understand Docker. So Mesos and Mesosphere. Um, they're also data center operating system. And uh, they kind of look like this, in my view. So what, what is it that they've solved? Well, they've solved the problem of uh, hyperscale resource scheduling. Right? It's a very hard problem to solve. Um, very few people are even exposed to this problem to begin with. And uh, being able to uh, build a very good scheduling framework that is resilient and works at scale is a very hard problem. And even if you draw a parallel with uh, Linux, um, it is indeed a very hard problem that's solved at Linux kernel, right? Scheduling the processes inside and now raising that to the next level of abstraction um, at the data center level and solving the resource scheduling problem, a data center problem, it's a hard problem to solve. Uh, credit to them. And now um, what they've built, they've also built Marathon um, that is a native kind of cluster manager on top of Mesos which is kind of like Apache Aurora, which, which was there for a while, or like Kubernetes. So again, um, it's native to Mesos, but you know, at the, the intersect is very dramatic. And then we also get this. Um, all these problems that have been solved, because people believe that this is the most important problem, I think that OpenStack in some sense have led the way there. Um, everybody's building foundation. So we have a Cloud Foundry Foundation, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, Open Container Foundation, all of these foundations popping up. Um, and while we're doing all of this, we're solving all these parallel problems, um, the world is continuing to look more and more like this. So 
I think that when we think about open source, um, the first thing that comes to my mind is Linux. And um, if you look at why Linux succeeded, one of the uh, things that people would argue is that you know, it had a benevolent dictator, and it had an opinion that was driven in a particular direction. It was a brilliant guy, Linus Torvalds. Um, and uh, that's true. But there's another, I think, very important component to why Linux was successful. Because if you ask Linus Torvalds himself, he believes that not invented here is a disease. It's a syndrome, it's a disease. And uh, the reason why I personally kind of like and admire OpenStack is because I think that the problem that OpenStack has solved, aside from the technology problems like the heterogeneous infrastructure orchestration and um, other things, um, OpenStack's solution to uh, the uh, data center operating system uh, kind of looks like this. Instead of focusing very much on solving the hard problems and uh, um, kind of, uh, you know, um, building a me too of everything, OpenStack community has really built uh, something unique. Um, it has built a glue for putting all kinds of innovations together. But more importantly, what it's built is that it's built a community with uh, this mentality of uh, leaving the solutions to hard problems to the professionals. And uh, I think that uh, as uh, we kind of uh, embark on this um, OpenStack 2.0 journey, um, the uh, ultimate vision um, is that uh, OpenStack can evolve um, as something that can glue together all of the best of breed solutions out there um, into something that is cohesive. And the reason why I feel that it's likely to happen is because the OpenStack community is vast, and um, I'm one of those guys that actually you know, follows the um, OpenStack mailing list. And we, as a vendor in OpenStack, we kind of want to have some sort of leverage. We want to be able to win against our competitors in OpenStack. And we ourselves oftentimes are proposing um, fairly prescriptive solutions to some of these hard problems where you see empty boxes um, on the mailing list. And if you, if you ever try to do that in OpenStack, the first thing that you will hear is that 10 guys will reply and say, well, this is what Kubernetes is doing. This is what Mesos is doing. This is what Marathon has already done. Why are you proposing this thing? How about we work with these communities and bring them in? And uh, it's very hard to actually have a diverse community uh, with this mentality. And uh, I think that over the last five years that OpenStack has existed, OpenStack has succeeded at building this community um, that uh, has uh, this mission of uh, assassinating not invented here syndrome. So um, before I... Uh, invite an OpenStack user, I wanted to close with this one thought, that um, um, aside from uh, just solving this problem of uh, you know, assassinating the not invented here syndrome, OpenStack did actually uh, win to some extent the, uh, the marketing war. Um, because uh, one other thing that uh, we have asked the uh, analysts that we have hired that helped us paint this picture of the world is, uh, okay, well, you know, when it comes to private cloud, what, is, uh, what, what do the organizations see the world like? And uh, the resounding answer was this, that uh, when people are considering building a private cloud, they see three options. They see VMware, they see Microsoft, and they see OpenStack. And uh, I think that is extremely important. So my kind of appeal to all of you, the OpenStack people and the broader ecosystem folks that are present here, is uh, to, first of all, embrace this notion of uh, um, um, assassinating the not invented here syndrome. And I think that uh, um, what we're here to accomplish is really about uh, delivering the unlocked data center infrastructure, the open data center infrastructure. Uh, we've all solved important problems. So um, instead of trying to conquer the world, we should all try to come together and find a way to build the best possible solution for the market. Um, so with that, I wanted to uh, bring on stage Lachlan Evanson, um, who I think is a good example of uh, 
actually supporting the vision of, you know, kind of working together with different solutions um, instead of uh, building things from scratch. And uh, Lachlan, perhaps you can introduce yourself. Tell us who you are sure. and uh, what is Lithium? Sure. So uh, Lachlan Evenson, I'm a team lead on the cloud platform team at Lithium Technologies. And, and Lithium Technologies uh, delivers a social platform via software as a service. So our cloud platform is made up of uh, private cloud offering on OpenStack and public cloud. Uh, we kind of span, span the gap, and the cloud platform team needs to provide a consistent experience for developers, runtime. Um, so we've been doing that for about a year in production. And to bring containers into the mix, you know, we can see level, leveling the playing field with containers and actually providing a consistent experience a lot easier uh, than it has been in the past. Thank you. So um, I understand that uh, you guys are using Kubernetes and OpenStack. So can you maybe share a little bit about that? Why are you using both? Why not one instead of the other? What's the use case there? Well, so if we take a look at OpenStack, it's, it's a fantastic platform, and, and Jonathan uh, coined it earlier, uh, for enablement and innovation. So really, once we have this cloud platform, what we want to do is build to that. So the cost of entry to building things like Kubernetes on top of OpenStack is very minimal. So when we look to the market for solutions for container orchestra orchestration, we want to look in context of how easy is this to throw on top of our cloud platform. So uh, when we looked at Kubernetes, we could go st straight on top of OpenStack with minimal effort. And that was one of our success criteria when we looked at Kubernetes, was how easy was it to throw over OpenStack. So I think you, know, you need to look at OpenStack as a platform to enabling you to go forward. So it was really easy to answer our container story with OpenStack as a platform. So last question before we close. I think that uh, there's kind of a unique opportunity to uh, um, sort of make an ask of the uh, different uh, communities that are represented here, the OpenStack community, uh, the container community, Kubernetes community. Um, what would be that ask? So in working with Kubernetes and, and OpenStack and using OpenStack as a platform, you know, we know and love all the APIs that are providing all these vertical storage, compute, networking. It would be great when using Kubernetes if I could integrate these storage, networking, and, and compute APIs and reuse them. We know and love them and we trust them. So actually getting that integration between them, I don't want to have to go and answer the storage story via another API. I have Cinder at my disposal, and we already are, are well versed and have tooling around that. So, you know, I would love to see more cohesion and, and projects like Kubernetes providing interfaces such as storage, persistent storage, and containers via things like Cinder. Thank you. And I understand you're going to be talking more about uh, your environment and uh, how things are. Yeah, so I have a technical deep dive tomorrow, and I'm going to get into the weeds of how we're actually delivering this on OpenStack. So, that, that session's tomorrow at 11. All right. Thank you, Lachlan. Thanks, Boris.